if you didn't catch last week's uh, video upload, we actually started a mixing contest. Since then, we've actually picked up a few sponsors, which is awesome. Indie Drums, uh, offering some drum samples. We've got Track Bids, Client Feedback System, 12 months of the gold, the middle tier, Smart Reverb and Smart Comp. We've also got Isotope, RX-8 Advanced and Neoverb, which is like an AI reverb. Also, you get some coaching sessions with me, both the winner and there's a random selection. Basically, anyone can win that who's not in the top three. Without further ado, let's show you guys how I would approach the mixing prep side. Details in the description. Let's get into the mix prep. Welcome back to mix prep. Um, I think this will be the final video. So Isotope, one of the sponsors of this competition, has finally announced that they're uh, doing their subscription models. From what I can tell, they've got pretty much everything I'm using on offer, including RX, Ozone, Nectar, Neutron, all the things that I'll be using in this mix. And it's only for $25 a month and you get a seven day free trial. So definitely worth checking that out and uh, giving some love back to Isotope for providing awesome prizes. Let's jump into the prep. So the final prep is, well, so at this point in time, I've actually mixed the song already, but I can direct you towards what I did as far as mix prep is concerned. Obviously, I won't be showing you my mix until after the competition. And the whole reason for this, I had a few questions about this, is because I didn't want to steer anyone in any particular direction. I wanted you to follow your own instincts, your own intuition, and hopefully come up with something that doesn't sound like a copy of my mix. So... We have the bass and the guitar are edited. Guitars are all edited. The Hammond, looks like I did a bit of editing on that. So the things I want to look at today are the bass guitar, the drums overall, the kick and the snare, and the lead vocals. I'm going to try something that's a little bit experimental on those. Maybe I don't recommend it. it might be a pain in the butt by the time it comes to mixing. So before we get to the lead vocals, let's dive into, what can we dive into? Probably the drums. Got a little bit of compression already on that. That's just so I can hear the uh, finer details while I'm editing. It may end up on the mix. Yeah, so I've moved the overheads up here. Let's move them all the way to the top. What I like to do is, starting with the snare, I'm gonna pan that to the left and I'm gonna pan the overheads to the right. I'm going to solo, let's take this group off. I'm going to solo the snare and the overheads and on the mix bus, Dirac Live, and I've also got Isotope Tone Balance Control. That's going to be there pretty much on every single mix that I do. I'm using the R&B Soul preset. By the way, if you have any questions about any of the techniques that I'm doing, I don't probably have time to explain everything that I'm doing, but pop your questions down below. Going to the mix bus, so I go to Other and I go to Corella Meter. This is a free plugin, it's resizable and it's great. Let me show you what it does. And what we'll do is for all of the drums, I want to try and get the best possible phase relationships I can with these. So there's a lot of snare in the overhead, so I'm going to try and favor those maybe. Yeah, there's really not a lot of kick, and you can see that on the trace there. So that's a snare. That's a snare there. The kicks are a lot quieter in those overheads, so I'm not going to favor those in terms of phase, but we will try and get it as good as we can. Plugin that I'll use for that is called Evo In, and that is by, this is by Flux. So let's try that again. Back to harmonic. Okay. This allows us to change in between phase. I'm not going to mess with the phase of the overheads, but what I'll do is I'll adjust that snare drum until we get to a point where the phase relationship is stronger. So let's adjust that. The other thing I forgot to do was uh, put these on a group. When you're doing this, you have to have all these plugins on the drums. Doesn't change the sound, but it does mess with the phase. So I need to change all of these to uh, group one. And then that way I can bypass 
all of them within the plugin at the one time. You'll see what I mean. Let's go to group one. Okay. So if we bring up a few multiple instances of that, if I bypass on one of them, bypass, see they all turn off at the same time. If I had them in not in a group, they don't act together. So that's the advantage of grouping them all together. Um, as far as I can tell, that's the only advantage of grouping them all together. So let me play that again. Now that they're all grouped, we'll bring Corellometer back across and we'll do the whole bypass thing so you can hear the difference. So it's just a little bit of extra low end there for free, minus the cost of the plugin, but I don't think it's that expensive if I remember correctly. And we're really just testing the best phase relationship for the snare versus the overheads. Let's do that hi-hats. I don't think the hi-hats have any snare in them if I remember correctly. So somewhere like there is probably the best for that. It's just a slight shift in phase there. We'll go to Tom 1 because that plays at the beginning of the song. Compare that to the overheads. And that's actually pretty good. Let me just grab a larger section. Very slight differences. Let's try the kick against the overheads. So we don't need to pan that across to there. We'll adjust the number of bands we've got. It's almost not even worth touching that. Um, so I'm going to leave that. Let's move on. We've got another tom tom here, all the way down the end of the arrangement. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to leave it on that setting. I think it improved it a little bit. And lastly, we'll do the rooms versus the overheads. As long as we're on this upper side, that's good. It's in phase. I don't think we're going to get much more improvement out of that, if I'm honest. Okay, now we'll have to check that with the kick against the rooms just to make sure we haven't messed something up there. Okay, we're getting a little bit of extra sub. I'm happy with that. I don't think you'll ever get that perfect unless you recorded it that way. Cool. Well, I think that's it for the drums. So what I would recommend after you've done that is just to print that into the track or you could leave it on there. It's totally up to you. Let me grab this group again so we can grab that. We can put in our crossfades, just make sure we haven't missed anything. Consolidate each and every one of those tracks. 
And now we have edited drums. We won't touch the bass yet because there's something I want to do with the kick and the snare. Let's duplicate that. And I want to duplicate the snare. This, it's really indicative of my workflow. You may find different ways of doing this, but I find it works for me and I like the sound that I get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I do and just do like a small section. So I'm just going to do a small section so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Basically, I'm making an attack track. One way you can do it is you can put something like trigger or a really tight gate on it and you can commit to that and uh, that'll give you the transient attack of every single hit. By tight, I mean like a short gate. The other way to do it, which I've been doing lately, it's way more labor intensive and it involves cutting out the first sine wave of every hit. So just like that. So if we tab to that, so let's tab. So that's gonna tab us to the first hit, second hit, third hit. I don't like where it's grabbing that transient. So what I can do, is I can select the entire track up here to save a bit of time. I can separate the clip at the transients and I can give it a 10 millisecond buffer, something like that. And that's probably enough to uh, figure out how much of this we need. Now the trick then is to turn this off the we'll tab to the region and I wanna get into a kind of nudge mode like 100 samples might be the way to go. So it's 100 samples, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Let's go to 900 just to be safe. And let's actually test that theory on a different one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That'll get us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now what I like to do to speed this up is to figure out, because I've got a macro enabled keyboard, I can actually come up with something I can press a key and it will do all of this for me. Not all of it, but maybe some of it. You can get into trouble with macros. So I've got this keyboard here, it's a mechanical keyboard. I've got two macros already. So what I wanna do is I wanna make another one and we'll call this a kick. And what do we wanna do? I wanna set it up so that it, if I don't have tab to transient selected, it'll tab to the region, it will tab to each and every one of those cuts, which has been kind of backed away from the front end of the note by 10 milliseconds. If I record this so I can tab and then I can on the keypad, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I can break the region by pressing B and then I can like shift tab and then I'll delete. And that entire sequence should get me through that. I'm going to stop that. There's no delays in there at the moment. And um, just to be on the safe side, I want to put in some delays in between those events. We'll just go, we'll go five milliseconds. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Five milliseconds in between. And then I can copy that, paste several times. And now I, all I need to do is copy that to a key on my keyboard. Okay, so that's that sorted. Let's put this to the test, shall we? It's already going to tab to transient, so I should just be able to uh, press my G6 key. And voila. So that's just gonna work its way through there. That's all good. We're leaving enough of that sine wave, pretty much one complete sine wave there. What we can do is we can figure out how much that is. So I can go to minutes and seconds, and it's about a millisecond. When we put in automatic crossfades, we can have roughly around the 10 milliseconds that we had on the front end, but we can maybe back that off to eight, put a fade there, we could put a fade there. So that's the concept. Let me not do the rest of that, but just show you. So can go in and then we can do our fade. So the initial fade in, we can do eight milliseconds. Last one is one, okay, and that's all done. So we can do these really laborious tasks quite quickly. But what does this sound like? Let's have a listen.
So it's phase coherent, which is great. And you can really see the benefit of having that on a fader. You know, so another way you could do it is have something like this neutron on there and have your multiband split so you're enhancing the attack at the top end. That's not going to give you the same results as this. It just depends on how much time you want to spend on this stuff. I tend to spend a lot of time on mix prep so that uh, I'm not pulling my hair out during the mixing process. So with that concept in mind, same thing happens to the snare drum. We don't really have a clear sine wave here, but I'm going to say that that's, that's a sine wave. So what we need to do is we need to do that split at the transients. So we might do like, let's split it at zero and we'll tab between those. You notice here, it might've picked up a few of the ghost notes, but it also might've picked up some of the kick drums. Like that there is a kick drum. So once you go through and grab all those transients, you just delete the ones that you don't want if they belong to the kick drum. You wanna just be enhancing the attack of the snare and have that on a different fader. You know, if this approach works for you, then that's cool. If it doesn't, no biggie. This is just how I do things and that's perfect. We have a phase coherent attack fader. Let's see how that sounds. Put that with the snare. So some of this stuff is clearly from a kick drum. That's from a kick drum. You don't need to keep them by any means. And you can quickly just delete those. So let's just loop this section. So you can see the real value in having those, um, especially on faders. That's what I do. It is a pain in the butt, but uh, it can be done quickly with a, a little bit of help from macros and some of the editing processes within Pro Tools. And the next thing I wanted to take a look at was the bass. Now let's just crossfade this. Let's get it consolidated and let's have a listen to it. Now I'm using Meta plugin and the reason is because I've got some type of harmonic distortion on there. I've got the free bass amp from uh, Plugin Alliance. It's Rock Rack V3 player. Love that thing. I feel like there's a few moments there where he kind of mishits strings. Have a, see what else we can find in there. hear that low string ringing out there. Uh, I'm not a fan of that at all. It's, uh, it's not, not a good sound. It's not a clean sound. So the way that I like to sometimes deal with these issues is just to send them over to RX and uh, get really intensive on the editing side. So some of you are not going to like this, but uh, hey, this is, this is how you get a clean bottom end if you really want to um, go to this level of detail. So what I would do is in RX, we have the ability to uh, adjust the gain. So I'm going to adjust it down quite a bit because I know when I mix this, I'm going to actually compress the snot out of the bass. So the last thing I want is all of this stuff coming up. What if the compressor brings this up? You know, it's really going to mess with the bottom end of your mix. So the best thing to do is just to, I'm going to set it at negative 28, arbitrary, I know, but we can instantly process this just by selecting instant process and having gain selected here, or you could click attenuate and then that's it. So I'm just going to go through this and that will be my process. So even that I've probably... and even all this stuff in between. 
it's not great. Okay, let me just get rid of that. So I'm going to go through and do this, but that's the general idea. You could possibly edit this stuff out. I just like the fact that in Rx you can see it. So maybe I went too far there. So yeah, don't overdo it. It should give you clean results. And don't get rid of all this stuff. Some of this is just him keeping time with the music. They're like ghost notes on a snare drum essentially for a bass guitar. I mean, that's not very nice. And there's also, I did hear a few clicks in there. So I'm going to address those as well. That's my process on the bass in this particular mix. I wouldn't say I do this on every single mix. At times I've had to, and this is how I go about it. And um, it tends to get me really good, uh, clean, low end. It's a pain in the butt, I must say. But using RX, being able to actually see it, and just having a tool where you can have it instantly process as soon as you select it does speed up the process a little bit, certainly more so than having to manually edit it. So I actually think that that's um, not meant to be in there, so I'm reduce that down. You can really take it as far as you want to take it. So before and after. Hear that? You could possibly gate out some of this stuff if you had a multiband gate. In fact, there is a multiband gate by Isotope. I just like to do this stuff manually. So a really good example of before and after is this. So if I'm compressing it hard, which I probably will, Way cleaner, absolutely worth the effort as far as I'm concerned. And now we move on to, uh, let's, shall we say, uh, experimental territory for me. I thought I'd give this a go. I had an idea. I thought, what if we took all the S's, all the breaths and stuff for the vocals and just pop them down onto a separate track? So what I'll do is I'll duplicate that. And what I'll do is I'll mute all of those regions. I'm going to create a macro using our trusty keyboard. We can delete that one. I don't tend to keep macros because if you accidentally press it, um, I have done silly things to the computer before, so I don't tend to leave them on there, especially if they're long strings of key presses and stuff because it wreaks all sorts of havoc on your, on your computer. What macro do I want to do? So let me think here. So I want to select a region by hand. I want to then press a key, have it turn off that S, and then turn on the one beneath it. So I want to break the region. I want to mute it. So that's control M and I want to go down to the next track. Then I want to break it and then I want to unmute it. That's what I'll use for that one. Uh, let's put in some delays in between. We'll go three milliseconds, see if we can get away with that. We'll copy that to key on my keyboard. So let's have a listen to the vocal. Let's find an S. Time goes by. Or a T. So something like this, t -t time. Perfect. Time goes by. 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 So maybe something like this. Perfect. Bye, any can let go. Take that. This sound here, the G sound. Any can let go. It's been running. It's been running, running from this to running from this to. So maybe we want to take. Running, running from, 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 from. F sound. 
I'll take this here, pop it down. And this is totally experimental. The reason behind this is so that I can process all of those uh, consonants and stuff a little differently. So I can not only DS them quite hard or as little as I like, I can you know make them stereo. I could I could EQ them in a certain way. Yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit. I will say probably not for the faint of heart, probably an extra step that you don't need to take. That pretty much covers everything that I kind of did that was specific to my mixing prep. I think that's it. So enjoy mixing, try and enjoy mixing it. Maybe take you know a few days off after you've done mix prep just to listen uh, with fresh ears. Good luck in the competition. Please, uh, you know, visit our sponsors, which are Sonable, Isotope, Track Bits, and Indie Drums. Thanks again to all those companies and uh, Simon Morrow for being one of the judges with myself. Can't wait to see what you guys make of this. All right, till next time, happy mixing. Mm -hmm.